Hi, I'm Brian Forrester. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Boost Lingo. Hi, I'm Connor. I'm formerly the CEO of Interpreter Intelligence, now excited to be the VP of Engineering um, at Boost Lingo. Boost Lingo was founded back in 2016, and, and our goal has always been to change the way that language interpreting services are delivered worldwide through technology innovation. I uh, didn't know much about the language industry five years ago, uh, but I was approached by a, a friend of mine, Dieter Runge, who had been working in the uh, language industry for many years, and he brought this idea to me, and we started researching the market and looked at the competitive landscape, and we saw a really great market with a, a an opportunity um, to innovate in technology. These really large companies had built um, very impressive businesses in, in the on-demand interpreting space. Back then, it was still a, a more green, growing market just slowly grew the business over time. Um, fast forward to 2021, uh, we took a growth equity investment from Mainsail Partners, which really allowed us to um, accelerate our hiring and, and investment into different areas of the business. So our journey was a little bit different. Um, so I'm a software engineer by background. My um, degree is actually in mathematics. And in 2010, I decided that I wanted to set my own course. So I decided to start a business very fortunate to pick up some big name customers back in the day, 2013, 2014. Um, and the business just grown sort of slowly and organically year over year. I became very aware of Boostingo when they arrived in the space. They were more focused on the video and the audio side of things than the scheduling side of things. I think they raised a little bit of money in, in a private round. So they were became a focus. They were on the radar from about 2016. And in many ways, they made me and us take it a lot more seriously in terms of what we were doing. Um, how we wanted to be presented as a brand. Um, and here we are now in 2022, and I'm very excited to be now part of Boost Lingo as an organization. Very excited for what we could do together. I, I do think it's really taking the best of what Interpreter Intelligence has brought to the market over these years with what the best of Boost Lingo has done in the market in the same space of time, in a shorter space of time. Our, our product focus has really evolved over time as our, our customer profiles have changed. You know, we're a born in the cloud technology and, and uh, we have an open API and, and SDKs that allow developers to build directly onto Boost Lingo. Uh, really any company with a, a front end uh, you know, website can, with a couple lines of code, embed our caller app into their web page and, and make calls on demand. Of course, with II, um, you know, we're going to be focused on integration. How do we, like you said, Connor, combine the best of both of these products into one? Um, you know, so that our language service customers and partners um, really get the benefits uh, of this acquisition. And so that's that's where we're focused uh, short term. I think what Brian described there, you know, I, I can contrast it with our journey in many ways. It was, you know, uh, a software engineer plus one or two helpers who basically had a customer. They had a need. We really didn't have any insight into how big the market was, how big the opportunity was. But we basically just pursued that. You know, we really embedded quite deeply with those customers, those first 10 customers. And I think that's reflected in sort of how deep the functionality in the product has been. And it's been a very defensive mode for us over the years. And as I say, when I saw Boost appear on the scene and then over, once they became more well-known, I saw them then putting their foot more and more into our space that we excel at. So again, if you think of us as this mature platform for scheduling, for reporting, for interpreter management, I think that segues very well with, with the Boost platform, what they've done in remote services. And of course, all of the stuff that overlaps with our system right now, we'll be just combining those in various different ways behind the scenes over the next 24 months. It became apparent that, you know, as we wanted to focus on a lot of the remote interpreting capabilities that our customers were asking for, we couldn't do both. Um, we couldn't go deeper on scheduling um, and build uh, the, the types of remote features we wanted to over time, and and um, you know, it, it's clear that Connor, from from the outside looking in, <laughs> um, you know, some of those big customers, I think, probably helped you. I imagine develop some more of those complex features and 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 the customization uh, and the unique kind of uh, workflows that a lot of these LSPs have. When when did you start um, recognizing remote interpreting as being a really important trend. I'm curious as, if that was caused by Boost Lingo or was that something that you had already thought about ahead of Boost Lingo and were building those features before we rolled up on the scene? Uh, that's a great question. You know, in the back of my mind, I was always interested by video and obviously video on the internet, you know, it's like radio on the internet. 
but um but the reality was as a small bootstrap company you know we were looking we we're sort of chasing revenue you know doing whatever we could to sustain ourselves so we didn't take any outside investments so as a result we didn't have a lot of time or bandwidth to sort of focus on those other opportunities it just became apparent to me that if we continue down the road of investing on the remote services side you know do we cripple our on-site business and um, so that's when i made the decision to reach out to brian and boost and see if there was a potential uh, synergy we could we could do by bringing ii and boost together and brian was totally into the idea and here we are today and i know a lot of our partners and, and your customers are are thinking the same thing what's going to happen to um you know, interpreter intelligence, what's Boost Lingo going to do, you know, because business continuity is so important to our customers. I'm, I'm curious how you see that evolving. So I th we're looking at it from a, you know, a two prong approach. One is the short term, so the next six months, and then the second is, is more of a longer term. Any significant changes we're going to make will be behind the scenes. So there's no anticipation for any type of migration or any type of um, forced upgrade to a different system. What you'll see, what our customers will see over the long term, is a consistent look and feel between the two products and then behind the scenes we're going to figure out how the two products actually glued together in more in depth and that will be seamless from an end user perspective and then in the short term again with no no impact to business continuity immediately we'll be making the boost lingo professional interpreter network available in interpreter intelligence so any of our customers can then tap in to this um, pool of uh, crowd of interpreters that are available to pick up calls and um, and then secondly we'll be focused on some Low hanging fruit in terms of just getting the UI, the user interface more consistent between the two products. So there's the two initial goals for the short term. And then I think there's some low hanging fruit as well that we've sort of left over the previous, well, we focused on the remote services that we'll probably pick up in the short term as well to help fill some gaps there for the on-site side of the business. Our goal is to keep people up and running and not disrupt uh, their business as we make changes behind the scenes. Um, but ultimately I think it's gonna benefit II customers and Boost Lingo customers alike, because at the end of the day, what we're we're trying to build is the best uh, unified platform for LSC companies to uh, scale their interpreting business on. And that's really why uh, this acquisition, another reason why this acquisition makes sense is that II had a similar philosophy of, of helping their customers scale their interpreting business. Um, so it, there's a lot of alignment there. So I think there's three three main reasons why this is the right thing for us. The first one was, you know, we've grown a, a reasonably sized remote business for video and audio, um, but our roadmap has quite a quite a lot left to do in it. So there was probably at least a six month to twelve month set of tasks to, yet to be done. Secondly, with the business that we got live, there's a whole different realm of support required for on-demand services versus SaaS. So SaaS in itself is a 24/7 model. But on-demand services for vo for video and audio, if a call doesn't go through, if a call gets disconnected for whatever reason, you need to have people and people with deep technical expertise to understand what's happening with those calls. So that was another resource gap that we had. And then thirdly, all of this time and effort was being spent, taking away from any work that we were doing for the on-site business. So those three things alone, you know, were, were more than enough justification for for me to initiate these conversations. And then as we saw what the cultural alignment between the two companies is and what their vision is for the future and what we can do together, I think it became a no-brainer really um, on, our, on our part. And I, I think Brian and the Boost team feel the same uh, after we twisted their arms sufficiently. <laughs> yeah, we're, I mean, part of the reason we did the deal, frankly, is, is not just because II has a best-in-breed platform um, for in-person scheduling, it's, it's the team. Um, the Connor has built a great team, a great culture. You know, that's a big part of the value here in, in our teams coming together um, is that cultural alignment. Um, you know, we put the customer first. Um, we make sure that we are uh, transparent with our customers and, and, our, and uh, uh, transparent with our product strategy and our roadmap and where we're taking the business. And I think Connor, um, you know, uh, comes to the table with a lot of... Uh, <laughs> Uh, knowledge uh, that he's gained over the last uh, 10 years or so in building II uh, that's only going to help us grow and, and, and become a, a, a more scalable and um, a feature-rich platform.